Hi, good way feedback. In this video, we cover ML experiment tracking with Vertex AI. Experimenting with machine learning models can get messy. That's why we need to be organized and have a process to keep track of all the different architectures and parameters we set when experimenting or training our models. Vertex AI experiments helps you to easily track, compare, and search within your experiments. There are many products on the market, and Vertex AI is, in my opinion, the most underrated. This video covers everything you need to track, manage UML experiments, and hopefully you get everything you needed for your specific use case. Since it's just an API, you can use Vertex AI experiments when training your models on your local machine or on the cloud. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video, and let us get started. As always, we start in a notebook, so first we authenticate this notebook with Google Cloud, then we install the SDK which we're going to use for the experiments. And we import the SDK. And then we are already at the starting point. To use Vertex AI experiments, we can, we can use the Vertex AI SDK or the UI. And the combination of both gives you great flexibility. With the SDK, you get the, you get the simple integration into UML code. And with the UI, you get the ability to easily compare your experiments. And if you need to, you can also create custom dashboards or get the data into your notebooks with the SDK. So you have a great uh, flexibility here. Everything starts with an experiment. An experiment contains everything you want or need to keep track of. It's the very starting point of our Vertex AI experiments. And the usage is quite easy. We define an experiment during the um, init of the Vertex AI SDK, and then you're ready to go. So if we execute this cell here, it takes a few seconds, already done, you see we have an experiment defined, an experiment demo. And if we now go to Vertex AI and we reload the page, you see we have um, now an experiment here. If we click on it, it's at the moment, it's still empty. The list here of experiments can also be filtered. So if you are crazy in running a ton of experiments, you can also filter them if needed. Each experiment consists of multiple runs. So for example, if we now want to start our experiment, we need to start a run. And for that, we also use a, a platform SDK. We have a method start run, and you can give it a name. I am using um, just a, a timestamp. And if we execute this, and go back to our experiment. You can see we now have a run actively running here. And as part of this run, we can log our metrics, our parameters, and our artifacts. And we're gonna start with the first one with the parameters. So we go back to the notebook, scroll down, and here you can see how we can log the parameters. Parameters are exactly what we use when we train different models, like the batch size or the number of layers of your, of your model. So basically, everything that is a hyperparameter for your model architecture are tracked with the parameters. And we can do that. So the one is still active. So we log the parameters. And again, we go back to our active one. And now you can see we have our parameters here logged. And if we go back to the parameters dashboard, you can also see the parameters here in your dashboard. There is another type we usually keep track of, and those are metrics. Vertex AI experiments provides three different types of metrics, depending on what kind of uh, metric you want to keep uh, track of. So there are summary metrics, time series metrics, and classification metrics. And we start with the first one, the summary metrics. Summary metrics are the simplest type of metric. You just track a single value like a number or a text. So for example, if your model training is done and you want to log how, how good your model performed, you usually log metrics like, like a F1 score. You can do that easily with the metrics, so we can log that as well. And we also go back to the run, and you can see we get this metric exactly like the parameters here tracked, and we can also see it in the experiment or runs dashboard. So we now have also the metric here. And you, as you can imagine, if you now have multiple runs, multiple different runs within one of experiment, you can easily compare them here and see which one performed best. 
Some of your machine learning um, metrics are collected over time, like the loss during the training, for example. For that, Vertex AI Experiments provides time series metrics, and time series metrics are stored in a TensorBoard instance. If you use this feature, please watch the video till the end, as the pricing for those TensorBoard instances are quite high. The TensorBoard instance needs to be created before we can block time series metrics, and we can usually and we can as usually do this via the UI or via the SDK. And I create the TensorBoard instance now via the um, SDK. So if we execute the cell and we get a TensorBoard instance, and those TensorBoard instance needs to be linked to our experiment. So we execute the cell as well, go back to the demo, go back to the um, demo experiment, and you can now can see we have a TensorBoard instant, instance linked here. So if we now go back to the notebook again and actually execute the time series metrics, for logging. You see, we log this over time. So imagine this would be a loop over your, over your um, training iterations. And we log, we can log multiple metrics at once. So I log the MSE and the RMSE, and it's now logged. And if we now go back to um, our experiment, we open the TensorBoard, dash, uh, TensorBoard instance. Need to authenticate for this instance. And as you can see, we have the MSE and the RMSE here from this specific one. The next type are classification metrics. The functionality around the classification metrics is limited, but it's still a very nice uh, extension to the normal metrics. It provide, provides you a metrics and visualization for IOC curves and um, confusion or classification metrics. And if we execute the cell, you see, we now have a method which is called log classification metric or log IOC curve, curve. And if we execute this, it's now a little bit different. If we go to our um, run again, we now have an artifact stored. So if we scroll down, you see we have now a confusion metric stored. And if we click on this artifact, we go to the Vertex AI metadata section. And if we scroll down, you can see we have this classification confusion matrix here um, displayed directly on the UI. Experiments within Vertex AI are more than just parameters and metrics. Artifacts are part of your experiment, like your data set, the model you trained, or anything else you create can be stored. Artifacts are stored within Vertex AI metadata and linked to your experiments or to your ones. It helps you to answer questions like what kind of data set was used for which specific experiment one. There are different types of artifacts supported. As always, I recommend checking out the actual implementation of the SDK, and we'll do that in a second as well. But let me quickly cover for you the different artifact types. As you can see, we can create artifacts by using the create command, and there are different uh, schema titles. So we have a dataset artifact, we have a model artifact, and we have a generic artifact. The generic artifact can be used if um, no, no of the other types fits your artifact type, and you are fully flexible of what you can store with this kind of artifact. An artifact is just a reference to a Google Cloud Storage location. That means an artifact could be also a folder containing all your model-related um, artifact files. To link an artifact to an experiment, we need to start an execution and assign this artifact to this specific execution. The execution is one step in your code, like preprocessing or training. And again, we are fully flexible here. Like in this example, we first create an artifact, which is our training data, and then we start the execution, our training. And as input artifact for this execution, we define our training data as input artifact. Then imagine we do our machine learning training. The training is done, and now we have an output artifact, our model. So we have data as input, do our model training, and have data, have our model as output artifact. And we assign this to this execution. And if we execute this cell, takes a few seconds. This is now executed. And we can go back to our run. Let me reload the run again. 
We scroll down and now you see we have two artifacts. We have our model and our data artifact. And if we click on the model artifact, you see we are again linked to the uh, metadata section and you have this lineage graph. So we now exactly see what kind of data was used for this specific execution and get also the model as an, as an output file. I do not recommend to building your artifact tracking the manual way. You can do this, obviously, but managing artifacts and the uh, corresponding lineage, like you see, like you can see here, is deeply integrated in Vertex AI pipelines. And there you get it out of the box. So if you really want to track the lineage, I recommend to uh, build out a proper machine learning pipeline. We already saw how we can visualize our experiments by going to the experiments tab and clicking into our experiment. And here you get all the ones for this specific experiment and you can compare the parameters and metrics here. You get a TensorBot instance to see the time series metrics and you can also check the artifacts uh, related to this specific uh, experiment run uh, by going to the detail page. There is another way on how you can actually get those data and for that we can get our SDK again. And you can call a method which is called get experiment data frame. So we get a data frame and we can see the experiment is still running and you get exactly what you have in the UI in the notebook here. You are fully flexible to integrate this into a notebook yourself, to build out a dashboard or to show the data somewhere where you need it outside of Vertex AI. And because you see it's still running, we now also end this experiment because we tracked all the metrics we want to. It's now ended. And if we want, we can now go to this one. We copy the identifier for the one and we can also get the detailed information for each of the metrics, parameters and artifacts. So you not only get the table, but you can also get the detailed information for each of the ones. As you can see, we get a list of the artifacts, we get our metrics, we get our parameters, and we also get the time series data. So if you don't want to go into the TensorBot instance to compare the data, you can also visualize it yourself if you want to. As always, we also have to talk about the costs and the experiment metrics, parameters, and artifacts are all stored in Vertex AI metadata. And this service comes with a pricing of $10 um, dollar per gigabyte. I think that's a fair pricing, but there is this one pitfall with the TensorBot instance. And those instances are costly. With $300 per unique user, you have to pay a lot if you have a large team. So I imagine you have a, people of, uh, a team of five people and all want to have a look into the time series metrics. As soon as they open the TensorBot instance and log in, you have to pay for each user $300 per month. It doesn't matter how many TensorBot instances you have, um, but $300 is still quite a lot. In my opinion, I'm too overpriced and it leaves a little bit of a, of a bad taste for an overall very nice product. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more videos and don't forget to check out the code and the article in the video description below. See you next time.